What's going on everyone? Ross Bernard here in our Dumbo Studios at Charge.fm for another edition of our in-studio series. And with me today are Taki and Alex from New York Rock Band. Eve's to Adam. Guys, thanks for being here today. Yeah, thanks on another us. brutally cold <laughs> winter day. We can't get, a, we can't get enough of the cold. Beautiful outside. Oh, just, talking, just gorgeous. Just, just a little gorgeous. brisk afternoon. <laughs> nothing bad, nothing bad. So you guys are in the hard rock scene. And my, my tastes have sort of shifted out of that. I was in a dab with the growing up because it, it seemed to be a little more mainstream then. Mm -hmm. And now, just what, what kind of is the state of, of modern kind of hard rock in, in 2014? Do you know what you guys are doing? Well, I think it's all pretty much packaged within a four minute song. You know, and uh, kind of uh, the recordings of the day are very. You know, the sound great, obviously, I think the sound quality of, of rock albums these days is, uh, you know, with technology and stuff, is uh, really kind of expanding the sonic horizons. There's a lot of, you know, bands playing loops, and, you know, it's still based on the guitar riff, but, uh, you know, I think uh, I think rock's in a, in a pretty good state. There's some great bands, you know, Five Finger Death Punch. Oh, yeah, the number one albums, Event Sunfold and Five Finger both had number one Billboard albums in the last six months. Um, I'm very hopeful for it. I think that um, too much. It's coming around, it's coming back around again. And I think that we're going to see a new ascension of hard rock and metal. Um, I think 2014 is going to be a big year for that because I think a lot of um, a lot of the music buying public is, is gravitating towards um, you know, a harder sound. And um, you know, I'm, I, that's why we're here. We, we are right on the forefront of that you know, and, uh, and excited for this new, uh, this new era. Mm -hmm. And so then you see like a lot of Obviously now is the time for festivals are being announced. A lot of the lineups are coming in, but it seems like rock is a lot of, is absent a lot of the big mainstream festivals. I mean, the only one that I can think of is like Lollapalooza or something like that that sort of embraces rock and puts it on stage like that. I mean, where where does that attention go? Like, where where are the festivals for for rock, or where does the attention get placed on it? Well, I think a big one is Rock on the Range. Yeah. yeah, there's Rock Oklahoma also, Carolina, uh, Carolina Rebellion, Shit Rock North Carolina. Um, there's quite a few that are, are large, you know, rock festival you known as, as hard rock metal venues. You know what I mean? Um, I see what you're saying. A lot of blues are being a more mainstream event um, like in the terms of a Coachella, you know, things like that, where um, you've got like a say a hard rock metal band intermixed with. Um, a huge alternative band or a huge hip hop artist, you know what I mean? And I, um, I totally applaud you bringing that up because I've always said that, you know, what our genre really needs is to kind of intermix more with other genres of music. It seems to be that, um, you it's know, it's own little island. Yeah, we've kind of segregated ourselves into this, you know, small little categorized island, you know, where we're kind of isolated and, and cut off from from some really amazing artists that are out there and and. I think the population out there um, would get more exposure and be more into bands like us if it wasn't just so secular. You know what I mean? So um, I'm pretty hopeful that a band like you know maybe like Avenged Sevenfold or Five Finger Death Punch will have an opportunity to be on on maybe one of these huge festivals and hopefully you know a band like Eve to Adam kind of following in that direction also. Um, but you know thank you to Perry Farrell for having the vision to keep a great festival like that alive and vibrant. Um, you know, and having bands like Soundgarden and Pearl Jam still be part of it as they were originally, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I mean, last year you get Nine Inch Nails as one of the headliners. For right. That day. You still, I mean, I saw Baroness there. I mean, you know, they, they, there's a spotlight for where, you know, all the festivals, it's all about diversity and all, it's about getting a mix, but then it seems like this one, you know, this one genre that is pretty there and pretty vibrant and has a place isn't is sort of excluded. Not represented. Yeah. yeah, I think that has a lot to do with crossover ability. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like a lot of the bands we mentioned are, um, you know, they're very intense and, it's, and the music's very aggressive and hard and a lot of that music hasn't, um, their singles or big songs haven't crossed over to the other, um, you know, genres. So that's kind of what's missing, I think, you know, where in the turn of the millennium, you know, you had bands like Nickelback you know, and even Creed that had um, a wider appeal because they had material that would cross over into mm -hmm. top 40 into pop. You know, that's not really happening right now in our genre. 
So, you know, but there, that's a double-edged sword because what I really love about where the genre is right now is that it's very, it has integrity, it's very pure to what it is, and so I wouldn't want to see that be diluted just for the, the mere... Uh, just the show up at Coachella. Right, exactly. I think that would be the wrong way to go about it. The right way to go about it is exposing <clears throat> the mainstream population to the sound of these bands for what it is, and not diluting the intensity of it and having them somehow you know, um, catch on to it that way. Right. How to do that? That's if I knew how to do that, I wouldn't be sitting here with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be doing it, and I, you know, we'd be talking about a whole other thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the question. But I'm hopeful that there's enough creativity and imagination out there that as this genre starts to waterfall, um, because it is growing, um, that you know that will happen. You know, so and we we will do everything we can with our band to uh, to push that out. Yeah. So you guys just had your fourth album come out in September, mm -hmm. uh, Locked and Loaded. What, yep. uh, what, what's special about this album? You guys, I mean, you, you obviously you've been in the game for a while, so to the longevity and to to be this this deep has to mean something. And then you know, what what about the album itself stands out to you guys? It's a different level of production. Yeah, the people we were able to work with, we had access to one of the best rock producers in the game, Elvis Gasquet. Yeah, and uh, you know, outside songwriting. And, Production uh, with uh, Eric Miles from Shinedown and Dave Bassett, who's a multiple Grammy winner for you know the rock genre. So we never had that access before on previous albums, and it really does make a difference to have the expertise of you know years and years of people who are platinum, you know, to help bring their knowledge of what they know into your world and your songs. And we haven't had that uh, sort of opportunity before, and uh, thanks to our label and our management. This time, uh, you know, we definitely did, and thanks to Mark Tremonti from Creed who hooked us up with all the bridge, you know, yeah. and Tremonti project. But uh, you know, we would have never been able to make Locked and Loaded how it is in its form without you know the help of these people. And, uh, well, for the majority of our career, we were we were an independent band, you know. Um, so it really took the culmination of everything we've done as an indie band to get to the point where to make this album, to get to this album. So this album is kind of. Um, validation and reward for all the things that we had accomplished on our own, um, surviving through a very um, tumultuous period of time in the music business and also a kind of an ever-changing genre of music, you know, hard rock and metal, you know, kind of um, evolving over the last, you know, eight to ten years. Um, and so, so this album was really a, a testament to us surviving and, and where most bands kind of decline over time, we've kind of actually gone the other way and we've actually become stronger, um, more aware of our personality and identity. And with this record, what we were able to do is really kind of sculpt that, you know, with the help of some really great talents. You know, um, Elvis Pasquet is uh, responsible for 25 million in sales, um, starting out with bands like Incubus, um, Stone Temple Pilots, Three Days Grace, um, Chevelle. Chevelle, Bridge, Chevelle um, very big, big albums, big bands that are still uh, have a huge presence in the genre today. So being able to go into a studio and work with him and have him look at you and go, this is really great material. I want to try this and I want to move this tempo. What about this bridge? I hear that melody, but here's another harmony and let's try to take it over here. And can you sing this? Can you go, you know, having that kind of influence is what every artist really wants because you're trying to push the envelope for yourself and for your, your audience. You know, um, we, don't, we don't like to keep it boring. I mean, we like to keep it moving. And these people really made it easy for us to, you know, we went in there with the attitude of like, you know what, we, we know what we're really good at. We also know where our, our deficiencies are. Can you help us? And, and it, it, was, um, it was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. When you're having fun in the studio, it doesn't seem like work. So that's, that's where um, I think the magic in this album really shines through because we had a great time making it. Awesome, awesome. And so now you guys are getting ready to go on tour uh, to Escape the Fate. Tell me a little bit about that. Like the, the, the collaboration with these guys. Yeah, we're going out for the month of February. So um, we'll be hitting the road a couple weeks. And uh, we're really honored to share the stage with a band that um, has defined its genre. You know, and it's a really unique intersection of sounds between our band and their band. You know, um, I think uh, there's a certain level of maturity in our sound and a certain level of intensity in their sound. I think it's going to really meet the middle between both audiences. And I think it's going to be. Um, a really great show, really for the, for the people that are coming out. It's all ages shows. It's on West Coast Run, you know. What is it? Yeah, twenty dollar ticket, you know. Um, 
so I think um, also there's a band called New Year's Day, which is making some noise right now too, that it's going to be opening. So, um, I, you know, it's, it's really great to get a phone call, you know, from their representation saying, hey, we really want Eve to Adam to be part of this. And, um, you know, that's what, that's what you work hard for. Yeah. You know, so we're really excited about it. Um, it's a West Coast run for us, being a New York City band, you know, getting to get out to places like Spokane, Washington, and Boise, Idaho, and Salt Lake, and, um, you know, out in Arizona and California. You know, that's um, it's a unique opportunity for us, you know, to push our sound onto the West Coast sound, so it's cool. Right. And then, what, do you guys have anything else planned for 2014 now? 2014? Yeah, we're starting to get some festival bookings, and that's, you know, uh, I think we have a show in Wisconsin in July, we're excited. Yeah, they just called us and we booked a couple days ago, we're going to be um, uh, opening for Aerosmith and Cheap Trick oh, in Wisconsin uh, in July, and um, a few other uh, appearances that you know, haven't put up yet, but festivals all through the summer, and uh, yes. we're up for quite a few uh, other pretty main, main stage tours too, so um, starting to get some interest from the UK and Europe now, so you know, um, 2014 is going to be really busy for us. You know, the new single Immortal is number 22 at Active Rock right now. Um, it keeps climbing. And, um, you know, the audience is growing pretty quick for the band. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how things change from, you know, the diehards that have been with us on this journey for so long. So, thank you so much, guys. Taki, Alex, you to Adam for, for coming in and uh, spending some time talking about Hard Rock with me today. Pleasure having you in the studio. Thank you for having us. Check out the 2014 February tour with Escape the Fate. Check, look, look for the single Immortal online, look for the other tour dates, and then EveToAdam.com. Everything Eve to Adam, all social media links are there. And uh, we'll see you on the road 2014. Thank you. Yes, for Ross, for Eve to Adam, Ross Bernhardt. Thanks for checking in, guys.